If you're wondering what's happening with Microsoft 365 Copilot, you're not alone. I'm gonna show you exactly what's wrong with Copilot and how it impacts you. Starting with the first and most obvious problem, Copilot is taking forever to roll out. Microsoft initially announced 365 Copilot on March 16th, 2023. Shortly thereafter, Microsoft started testing with a small group of customers, 20 enterprise customers. Then a couple of months later, they launched what they call the Early Access Program. This was a paid invite only program for 600 customers worldwide. As of the recording of this video, that was more than six months ago. Even though Microsoft was first out of the gate to announce integrating AI into their applications, Google has already beaten Microsoft to the finish line. Google recently released Duet AI for Workspace. This is their version of Copilot that works across their applications, Docs, Sheets, Gmail, and Slides, and it's already available. On the other hand, Microsoft has yet to even release 365 Copilot. Now, Microsoft just announced a GA release date on November 1st, 2023. What does GA mean? GA stands for General Availability. That means this will be a fully supported version of the software. This is not just a beta release for testing, but, and there are a couple big buts, the first round is for enterprises only. Now, what does this even mean? First, it's gonna require a minimum 300 seat purchase. Next, each of those licenses must be either E3 or E5. So, if you're not part of an organization that's gonna sign up for at least 300 E3 or E5 licenses, you're out of luck. Why the restrictive access and hefty minimums? Here's what Microsoft said. This will allow us to provide additional support as they, the organizations, begin to utilize and incorporate it into their business operations. As we gain more insights and experience, we plan to gradually extend access to businesses of varying sizes. Translation, most of you won't see this anytime soon. Gradually extending means prepare to wait a whole lot longer. Second, and more importantly, sounds like Microsoft is stalling. It sounds like Copilot really isn't ready yet. And that's because there are major issues with Copilot. I'm gonna talk about those in a minute, but before we get to that, there's another but. You see, Microsoft's announcement about the release of 365 Copilot was that it was rolling out to their applications, some of their applications, not all of their applications. There's the usual Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, Teams, Loop, Loop. Does anyone even use Loop? Conspicuously absent is Power BI. Even though Power BI is a significant part of the Microsoft portfolio, and Power BI Pro is included in the E5 license. So why not Power BI? I'll talk about that in a minute, but for now, the real question is why we don't have Microsoft 365 Copilot yet? Well, that leads to the second problem, and it's a big one. Users have been reporting major issues with Microsoft 365 Copilot. Who are these users? These are the users who work for organizations that are in the Early Access Program. The Early Access Program is a fancy way of saying beta testing. It means there are bugs and they're trying to work them out. One major issue that comes straight from Microsoft's Copilot Community Hub is that when you turn on Copilot's access to the Microsoft Graph, it loses the ability to connect to the internet. Now, what is Microsoft Graph? Graph refers to a way to access all of your information across all of your applications in Microsoft 365. Everything in your Word docs, Excel files, Teams chats, pretty much everything in your Microsoft 365 instance. I mean, accessing your own data is a huge plus. Think about how much time that would save you from having to dig through docs, spreadsheets, emails to find the information you're looking for. But for Copilot to be really useful, we needed to be able to access that data as well as data from the internet. Microsoft has promised that the real game changer with Copilot is the ability for Copilot to access all of your data in all of your documents. But that shouldn't mean that Copilot then becomes oblivious to everything else on the internet. It shouldn't be an either or. To be truly helpful, Copilot needs to be able to access all of the data wherever it is. Speaking of data, that brings us to another problem. And I'm talking about data analytics issues. The truth is GPT-4, the AI behind Copilot, can't even do simple math. So how is it gonna handle data analytics? I talked about that in a previous video. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is a real problem with Copilot. And I believe it's the main reason they didn't mention Power BI when they announced the applications that Copilot was rolling out to. Here's the root of the issue. GPT is an LLM, a large language model. At the most basic level, 
GPT just predicts the next word in a sequence. It does this based on all the information that's out there on the internet. In essence, GPT has learned how to write by looking at all the writing that's out there. Not really designed for math. Now, there is at least a glimmer of hope. ChatGPT has something called Code Interpreter. This is a specialized version of the model trained on code and data. But it remains to be seen how well Microsoft can leverage this inside of Power BI to deliver truly useful data analytics. Bad data is one thing, but bad insights from good data is another problem entirely. Which leads us to the next problem with Copilot and the number one issue with AI overall. And that problem is hallucination. What we've seen so far with AI chatbots is that if the chatbot doesn't know an answer, it'll just make it up. In one example, New York Times columnist Kevin Roos reported that Google's Bard chatbot repeatedly gave him wrong airline information. And when searching for trains, Google's Bard made up a train that didn't even exist. Now I have my own personal experience with hallucination. Earlier this year, I hosted an NFL draft party with some friends. I asked ChatGPT what player it thought would be picked in the next round of this year's draft. And several times when I asked ChatGPT that, it suggested players from last year's draft class. These were players who had already been drafted. Professor Ethan Mollick of the Wharton School said it this way, ChatGPT is an omniscient, eager to please intern who sometimes lies to you. Because of this, there's really no confidence we can trust the answers the Copilot gives us. What does this mean? Well, you literally need to double check everything. So, will Microsoft Copilot really save you any time if you have to go back and verify all of the answers it gave you because you can't trust what it says? I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna be able to sleep well at night knowing that the answers that Copilot gives me could be wrong. Another problem that's just as unsettling, security. Microsoft has promised that your data will be secure with Copilot, that it's not gonna ingest all of your data into its language model. Now this sounds great, but how do we know this is true? Anyone can make a promise of data security. But the truth is, data breaches are common. As recently as just a few months ago as we're recording this video, Microsoft had a major data breach. And if you do a quick Google search, you'll see there's a long history of data breaches with Microsoft. Computer World's Matthew Finnegan reported this. The Microsoft 365 Copilot is not yet fully enterprise ready, especially in regulated industries, according to Aviva Latan, Distinguished Vice President Analyst at Gartner. And what about just the practical issues with security. Will other people's co-pilot have access to your graph data? That could be a huge time saver if other people on your team didn't have to bother you for information and they could just get it from co-pilot. On the other hand, this could raise significant privacy and legal concerns. And with all these different levels of access, how will you be able to manage permissions within your organization? I mean, have you seen the Microsoft admin screens? They're not pretty. Another problem with Microsoft 365 Copilot is pricing. $30 per user per month is almost three times what many people are paying for the Microsoft 365 license. And that would be on top of what they're already paying. Let's take Microsoft 365 Business Standard, for example. That's $12.50 a month. Now, technically, this is the lowest tier that's going to be eligible for Microsoft 365 Copilot. Add on Copilot, and now your cost comes to $42.50 per month per user. But as we've seen, that won't even be available in the initial release. In the initial release, you'll need to have at least an E3 license and 300 seats. Now, if you add on Copilot, that means to take advantage of Copilot when it's released, you're looking at a minimum yearly investment of almost $200,000. So the question is, is Microsoft 365 Copilot really worth it? In other words, is your return on investment gonna be at least 200 grand per year. That remains to be seen. I mean, it's one thing if Microsoft 365 Copilot can save you time and increase productivity. It's another thing entirely if it doesn't provide accurate analysis of data, it hallucinates and tells you things that aren't true, or it keeps you up at night because you can't be sure your data is secure with Copilot. To be honest, another problem, the competition. Copilot may not be your best option. There's some pretty stiff competition out there, starting with ChatGPT. ChatGPT has a free version and it's pretty good. There's also ChatGPT Plus at $20 a month. Remember, GPT-4 is basically the same model that's behind Microsoft Copilot. And then there's even ChatGPT Enterprise, which is call for pricing. Now, whenever I see call for pricing, I think of the old saying, if you have to ask how much it is, you can't afford it. Google also has barred free version, which again is pretty good. And as I mentioned earlier, Google just released 
AI for Workspace. That's their version of Copilot across their application. And that also costs $30 per month, but it's available right now. Then there's Anthropics Claude. Now they have a little bit more complicated pricing. They do it on a cost per million tokens. And there's one cost for the prompt and there's another cost for the response. But get this, Amazon just announced a $4 billion investment in Anthropic Claude. I'm gonna be watching this closely to see what kind of developments come about with Claude. And what about even Bing Chat Enterprise? If you have at least Microsoft 365 Business Standard, it's free. And even if you don't, you can get it standalone for five bucks a month. So with all of these problems, is Microsoft 365 Copilot really the right choice? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And if you've seen any problems with Microsoft 365 Copilot. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.